Okay, so here's the first uh, first episode of Walker, Texas Golfer. So we're out in the literal middle of nowhere. We're at the Links and Rolling Hills. And that golf course is located in Corning, California. It's just off I-5, uh, right in the middle of some rural farmland. You're going to kind of see see that in this. So the tees we're playing are uh, from just under 7,000 yards at 6,813 yards. So the first hole is a par 5. and Holy shit! That was a straight top. Great shot, Walker. Great shot. So we find it. It didn't go into that long grass on the left. I've got 292 yards to the hole, so not ideal. Our friendly little yellow golfer pops up. Take an aim at this with a, uh, it says three wood on the screen, but it's definitely a five iron trying to lay up. So uh, second shot, put it right on where we wanted. Kind of wanted to get up on this hill to see the green. You can't see the flag that well. The top of the flag is there. So we'll throw a little mark on, mark on that right before we hit it. But I got a 56 and I'm just trying to hit it high and drop it on the green. Hasn't rained in California at this point for about 47 days. Um, and it's starting to show in golf courses. You're getting long runouts and hard bounces on green. So that one lands about full high and rolls back. So this is basically the same angle we were just looking at at the green, but a little closer. Got a putt for a four, miraculously. And don't even get that thing close. So the strength of my game is definitely not putting. Um, it's definitely... T, T game, T positioning, um, that kind of thing, and iron striking into greens. So we're trying just to go right up the gut on the fairway. You could probably see my feet are tilted way out to the right, and boom, we hit that one off the hole entirely. It's not even close. It's on the right side of the right side of the old uh, cart pass, so that's not great. But we do find it. You can see the out of bounds stakes there on the right. And that's another, that is, I hit that one right in the forehead. Miserable with the 51 degree gap wedge. So ends up in a bunker, green side. Got plenty of green to work with and we shove it clear past the hole. So no spin out of the soft sand. Uh, now we're looking at this bad boy for par and we leave it short again. So would have been nice had the old hole been there. Tap that in for a bogey. So first bogey of the day on the second hole. This is a great hole right here. It's 350 yards, but as a crow flies, it's probably, you know, 340 or so. Um, so we are taking dead aim at the flag. Going to try to hit a little bit of a draw in there with our driver. Um, for reference, I tend to carry the ball temperatures and conditions like this about 290, 310, somewhere in there. Uh, I can get it up to 310 if I need to. This one got 302, rolled up, um, and we're 36 yards out. We have to hit this chip low, and we've got to land it basically in the rough and have it bounce down this hill to get it to stop. Like I said, there's no checking on the greens. So we tried to get a little fancy with this one and did okay, I think. Feels like I did okay. Um, so a little behind the uh, putt, you can kind of start to see how this is rural farmland, and it's... It's awesome. So I took some extra time to kind of be able to call that out on this hole. But this putt's a little left to right. You can kind of see that the ball is a little bit below my feet. So we're putting up an indentation right there. And then the green does have uh yeah, never, never even gave it a chance. So that wasn't great. Um, you know, we take the tap in pretty easy for stress-free. So Shot of the day at this point, coming up on this. Um, pretty excited about this shot. It's 209 uh, yards out. I've got a five iron in hand. Um, no wind to speak of. You can see the flag off to the distance to the left of the bunker. I'll highlight it here for you. So you can see that. And we're just uh, we're just trying to drop it in on the right side. The green bends a little bit to the left. And I just clip this thing exactly how I wanted to. Um, so I was pretty proud of that shot and I watch it skim over here this is a very readable putt it's right to left I've got it about a cup 
Uh, turns out it was uphill. So we give it a little wrap and snaps off, just absolutely dies. What do I have to say about it? Look at this bullshit. God, volcanoed hole. Yeah, the holes are volcanoed out here, which basically happens because when you pull the... Uh, Oh wait, let's let's talk about this drive. So I'm aiming there to the left, and again, my alignment is terrible. I hit this one into the prairie. So it's not not great. But we uh we recover and make a wedge shot that's just dead on line to our target and Holy shit. Way too long. Way too long. So sad part about this is I hit a chip that checks for the first time, but it, you know, after further examination, it was definitely into the, into the grain here. Um, but we recovered on the, realized that there were volcano holes. This one's not that bad. Um, this checked a little bit, ended up short, but uh, I stepped up and that glitch right there is the battery about to die. So it stays short, but I nailed the, the putt to finish it off. So we stay at plus one. Uh, through five holes, which is great. Um, hole number six here, par three, 154 yards. We take a nine iron, and I didn't realize how uphill it was. You can kind of see it in the video. So that's dead at the hole, but short, a good 18 feet. So just refuse to hit the putts hard enough. They're not even close. Um, that's that's going to be uh, pretty much typical of our round of golf. So... Boom! We're hitting the old stinger. That is the first Walker, Texas golfer stinger. Uh, and then I go to run to catch up with the cart girl who had left me. And then uh, I desperately was in some need of some food. That will come, come into play later. Now we've got a three wood. This shot I was very proud of. 294 yards. As you can see, we hit our aim point. I knew that the ball was going to bounce back left to the hole. And we hit this, you know, just short of the green, gave it a wrap. I was excited to kind of lag this one. This is also the first appearance of the Texas wedge for the Texas Walker golfer, whatever, something like that. Anyways, leave this one short and then this putt. I'm like, fuck this. I'm not leaving it short. And I ram it. And I was really trying to take all the break out of that and go dead towards the middle and it breaks off to the left in about the last I'd say 15 16 inches so that was brutal so now this drive you can see the fairway the dormant fairway on the left but I'm trying to go right and I'm basically aiming at those at those buildings to the right that you can see so it's a little bit left of where I wanted to be I could have went much farther right than that but ran through the fairway um, because I wasn't as far right as I wanted to be and now this is a hard dog leg right. I've got 92 yards in and I'm trying, it's a front front flag. So I'm trying to bounce it off a hill. Oh no, it bounced the other way. And you hear me say, oh no, not the other way. It bounced to the left magically. So this is a downhill putt, uh, the second occurrence of the Texas wedge for Walker, Texas golfer. And it's downhill, a little hoppity, but I got the line, boom. First birdie, first birdie. I'm feeling it. Yep, feeling pretty good on that one. So uh, that was awesome, given that the ball hung up and actually bounced the wrong way. So feel myself on this, take dead aim, and I sling this motherfucker to the right again. Now I'm watching it click down the cart path and get ever so closer to a pile of shit I do not want to play golf out of. Yeah. So... It ends up on the cart path, rolling around. I take relief. I have to take relief on this side, and I'm right up against oh, that. You can see I was aiming out to the right. I immediately say, oh, shit, as the ball ends up in a, a bunker. Now, I just blow the hole up. So I tried to make a, a very good effort at um, you know getting that ball out of the, the bunker, 
thought I did what I wanted to do. Oh then on this gosh. putt, I just pull it and blow it past and I'm blowing it up. So you saw the icon, you know, hit subscribe if, if you're liking what you're seeing so far. I'm going to do a ton of these, I think. They're really fun to do. I've had a blast uh, putting it together. I'm going to try to speed up the rate at which I can do these. Um, so yeah, please, you know, subscribe. That will help all this stuff. Um, you know, Walker, Texas golfer is my sponsor is my, my own wallet and it's, uh, it's getting murdered. So if you could hit subscribe, you know, say hi, uh, I really want to engage with everyone. So, you know, please feel free to engage. So looking on the front nine, doing okay. 56 greens hit. I, I don't really, as you could see, I'm not really worried about hitting greens on this, this course, the, the roughs playable. It's, it's fine. I missed a lot of uh, greens and it was not great. Um, so anyways, off the 10th tee here, 519 yards. I actually thought this was a par five when I teed off and I slung a really long drive as a hook, but then oh. skull absolutely trash ass. Just donkey Kong skull. Oh, Oh, it hit the flag. Yep, it hit the flag. Wow. So I come back and try to check this thing off the flag. No, I didn't try to, but it did. Hold it. Yep. So I had what I thought was a par putt, so I'm upset there. Make my par putt in Shit, actuality. It's a yard hole. But I'm still it's plus two. a really long hole if they were still using the uh, back tees, but all, like two of the back tee boxes are shut down. Yep. So my target here, I'm tired of going right. So I really line up and make an effort to to get turned through this shot. I'm aiming right over those bunkers. Stay a little behind it. A little better, but I did fall back. It does go left. I'm I'm thinking I'm in big so time trouble. So it looks like there is a tier in the back, so but a little more than 100 yards. Right in the middle of the fairway. Probably with my golf bike in it. So super excited. Um, this is the first time I've actually ever hit the fairway. Now that I think about it, I'm always in the right and the rough, uh, just beyond the the uh the bunker so i've got a little sand wedge here 56 degrees 103 yards maybe a little bit downhill just want to land it here on the right just to the right side like i said yep just to the like right side like i said thank you so i'm excited here uh it did rip back three yards three four yards farther yeah, as I mentioned there, if I had just hit three or four yards farther, I think, you know, would have had a chance to, to go in. And, and, you know, the one part of my game is 100 yard or like 80 yards to, you know, 160 yards. And inside that range, if I get a flat green like this or, or something with a backstop where you can kind of spin it off, I mean, it, it's not an exaggeration to say that I'm trying to make it uh, on, on those because, I mean, it's really where I make up a lot of strokes. Yeah. Yeah. Another short putt that just <laughs> snaps off. I've been getting side. killed. We've got some volcano holes. So let me, so I'm going to talk about the volcano the holes for a second. Those happen when they pull the, they pull the, they pull the, this is just a terrible shot. So just watch it spin out to the left. Um, but when they pull the holes up in the morning, if they don't tamp them back down well enough, they just get worse and worse throughout the day. And they're really volcano. People think it's because they step around the hole. That's actually not right, true. That's bad. Um, it's it's that tamping situation. If they don't get it tamped down after they pull the tool up out of the hole, it leaves a lip. And you'll see putt after putt after putt, especially if you're a die putter, do what you're seeing in, in this video. So it is what it is. You know, uh, when you figure that out, you just got to hit it harder. So big time flop shot coming. This this was an awesome shot. I'm about to grab the camera so you can see. Uh, but see this fucking shot yeah this was crazy oh, over that really bunker really right there without there. going if you look where the flag is pointing and where that sign back is on that fence there's about 30 yards between the edge of the green and the fence and it's all straight down into a ditch so it did break but i now it. yeah now i'm i'm sick of the the volcano holes having at it so i'm gonna get it like two feet by every time to try to give myself the best chance. So at least I'm adjusting, but it's not great. So three wood off the uh, off the tee box here. You want to lay it short. There's a bunch of trouble. You want to lay up to, you know, 140 to 120 land. Actually, that might have been a five wood. I can't remember. But 
Uh, first chunk of the day. Uh, I don't do that very much, but uh, I definitely hit that chunky and it didn't quite get all the way there. So that's the result. I left it way, way short. And then this putt is tragically short. Um, you can kind of see how much it rolls out there. Um, so I was worried about this because it was a downhill putt, but just terrible, terrible putt, awful putt. Um, so yeah, just trying to bang this in now for par, but we're definitely going to finish out here with a, uh, with another bogey again, not even close, but now starting to get right. it there. So I'm definitely understanding All right. that. I joined up with a couple of guys that are only playing a few more holes because it's starting to get dark. So we had 184 yards in to this flag. Actually hit a really good shot. And it's a par three. But too much and, club. you know, I knew I was using too much club yeah. and striped it. And I think you I went a little long, but I was kind of afraid to hit the shorter. These guys are great though. It, so. The four Teds, shout out. They were mostly from Chico. So another Texas wedge through the fringe rough, whatever that is. Uh, looks like it blows way past, but it actually wraps around. I, I tapped that in. I didn't bother getting the shot. So here's another drive. Every time, out to the right again. So I had a hard time finding this one, uh, but it was right there in an area that I didn't know it was going. So 235, we've got a five wood. That one makes the first appearance and just pull it dead left. It crossed at least. Damn. So now, chipping out of the rough, my friends have now left me. They were only joining up for a couple holes. It was starting to get real cold. Uh, balls stopped flying around. They were out of here. So, leave this one putt short. This putt is for the four. And I did four. the same four thing break. I did on the par four prior to this. On uh, 13. Leave this just on a mile short. So, same late. thing. I'm just killing myself with the putting. Uh, today. Not, not sure what it was. I think All the right. greens were a little slower maybe than I kind of gave them credit to. So this is a tough hole. It's starting to get dark. Hadn't turned on low light yet um, in the camera settings, but I will throw up the flag. It's right there. The cool part about this hole we'll get into when we walk down, uh, but a little 165 yard shot, a little bit downhill. I think I have an eight iron and I'm just trying to hit this smooth and soft as I can get it to land where it hits. And I left it a yard short and about, I don't know, 10 feet out to the left, maybe something like that, 12, I can't remember. But this is beautiful. Uh, number 16, 17, and 18 are my three favorite holes on this course. Um, 16 and 17 are built along a, like kind of like a makeshift wildlife preserve. So there's a duck habitat right there that's just littered with mallards. Uh, during certain times of the year. Now is not one of those, but uh, they'll be there soon. So you can kind of see where we where we ended up. Um, great shot in there. I was really happy with this. Time to nail the birdie putt. Get one of these strokes back. We are uh, we're at plus four. I don't like that score, um, especially with such good conditions. And we get it. It all, I almost left it short again, which would have uh, sent me into a frenzy. So, all right, we got the aperture open. We can see now. Yeah, so my aim point here is right there. I'm trying to drive it over a bunker, and I get a little bit left here, which is fine. Um, I was really trying to get my shots left. So gets left, I hit this hard. We got 430 in. This is a dead straight hole as the crow flies. Got 430 in. Uh, after this, we were left with 94 yards. So if you're doing math, it's about 336. Um, it's a little bit downhill, so that's that's helpful for sure. But it's stopping this little kind of mud spot. And then I just I tried to hit this low and skip this in there, and it did not work. I put it right into the lip of a bunker. So we're gonna go up, check this out. We just gotta pop this up and get it. Close to the green. Yeah, as you could say, Walker. As you can, uh, as you can hear, Walker says he's got to pop this up, get it close to the green. So, trying to hit it up in the air and get some carry on it, and I do. Uh, however, no check whatsoever. So it rolls off the kind of the edge. We're I think on the fringe. Because my cart and my putter are very 
very far away. Yeah, my car and my putter were probably 80 yards back. You kind of have to walk down to this, and I just said, forget it. So, but with the miracle. Yes. Yeah, so. I like it. Up and down for the par out of the fucking sand. Yep. Let's go. So, yeah, so I was having fun. Now it's completely dark. Uh, the aperture is wide open, like they always say on the PGA Tour. You guys cannot believe how dark it is, but I can't see anything. So I have no clue where this ball ends up. It's kind of a miracle that I find it in the first place. But I did back up to the tee boxes that are no longer being used, so I could play the 638 distance. And I threw that thing straight in the air. I didn't realize how high I had hit it. But I found it. But I'm driving, and I'm actually ready to go home, and I'm driving on that car path right there. And I look off to the right, and I see a glint of a yellow ball. And it's dark enough that it's, like, illuminated. Uh, this, honestly, given the circumstances, how dark it was and the, the level of grass I was trying to plow through, this was uh, one of my favorite favorite shots of the day. So we got to loft it up and try to get it back into play. Yep, just trying to loft it up smooth. I'm choked up on a five wood. Just a nice, smooth dig out shot. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I was really enjoying that. Putting game's trash. Now you can see it's a lot darker. This was almost pitch black. I could kind of see, I, I knew that the dormant grass was sort of pointing at the green. So I wanted to hit it in the middle of that. I think I have six iron at this point. And I felt like I threw it way out right. Um, I couldn't, couldn't really see. I think the, uh, the shot tracer there is accurate, but I didn't realize like how far left that aim point was. So you can see the flag there. We're just trying to chip this up. Get a two putt. Get out with a six. Six hundred thirty-eight yards in the uh, in the uh, dark was good. So really bad back nine. Uh, one birdie there. Three bogeys. Uh, didn't do anything crazy, which is good. Hit way more greens. So uh, we turned that around. Uh, didn't hit a lot of fairways. Like I said, wasn't super worried about it. Just given that you know it's not that penal if you go offline. But this is kind of what my game looks like. Although. Um, I'm trying to hit about 75% of fairways. I want to hit three out of four typically. Um, so that was, or excuse me, greens. I want to hit three out of four greens. So that was not great. The, uh, the recovery could have been a little better, um, as it always can be. And, you know, definitely going to work on that, but, uh, not all in all, not a bad score. First round in shorts in 2022. So we're excited about that. And, you know, again, just uh, subscribe. Subscribe. Keep watching this. It, let me know in the comments how you feel about it. I'd love to get your feedback. Thanks for watching, guys.